Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And also thank you for, for you for staying around and thanks for the organizers and Jamir for inviting me over here. So when I looked at the program, uh, I just realized that, that my talk will probably be slightly different from the rest of the, of the things. So I will not talk about measurement-induced processes. I will not talk about measurement-induced uh, phase transitions. And I will not even talk about quantum computing in the area of uh, uh, NISC. Um, but uh, so after I've now reduced your expectations, uh, I hope I raise it up again a little bit in the, uh, the rest of the talk. So uh, uh, I hope I can tell you uh, some maybe interesting things about uh, quantum impurities in the Bose gas. And there will be some aspects of non-equilibrium and uh, steady state, so open, uh, open systems in, in, in the game. But, but before I uh, do so, uh, let me uh, thank the people who did the work. So most of the work was actually done by my graduate student, Martin Will. And we had a, a, a couple of uh, very good collaborations. Uh, former student, Jonas Jaga, and there was uh, Gregory Askar-Karshik and also uh, Jamir here. OK, so what is the problem all about? It is uh, actually a very old and uh, very uh, simple one. Uh, you're looking at a one-dimensional uh, condensate uh, of bosons uh, with some point-like interaction. And you put in one or uh, multiple uh, impurities uh, described conveniently in first quantization. And you add uh, some uh, point-like interaction of the impurities uh, with, uh, with the gas. Now, um, I'm actually interested uh, in the case of a weakly interacting Bose gas, so the boson-boson interactions are not of that particular interest here. So uh, I will assume that the uh, Tonks parameter, which describes the strength of this interaction, is, uh, is small. Or uh, if you want, the product of healing length and density in one dimension is uh, larger than one. Now, the second thing that I, that I also want to assume, uh, that the mass of the impurity is sort of uh, large, uh, at least of the order of the, of the uh, surrounding bosons. The reason being that if you consider the collisions between a, a background boson and, and, the, uh, and, and the impurity, uh, uh, and then the impurity hits another boson, you want to have this process uh, to be not that uh, 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 very important. And, uh, but uh, what I would like to look at is actually the system uh, where you have strong interactions, strong interactions between the impurity and uh, the condensate. And it turns out that this is, uh, can be quantified uh, in terms of this uh, in impurity boson interaction strengths being much, much larger than the boson boson interaction strengths times this product, this uh, dimensionless number of healing lengths and uh, 1D density. Now, uh, is, since we have um, um, a uh, weakly interacting condensate, so the typical way you would describe this is to say, OK, we take the, uh, uh, the, the bosons. Uh, split off the, uh, uh, the homogeneous condensate and add some small fluctuations. Then we expand the theory in second order in the fluctuations and ignore, uh, uh, diagonalize the second uh, um, uh, order term and ignore all higher order processes. And then basically what we end up with is a gas uh, with non-interacting phonons. That's all very uh, old and clear. And now uh, then in a the second step, you add the impurity and then the impurity uh, interacts essentially with the, with the phonons. It can actually, actually either scatter a phonon out of the condensate, or it can mediate uh, phonon scattering, or it can uh, create pairs of, uh, of phonons or annihilate pairs of phonons. So if you do this, then you actually end up in, in a model uh, which you know very well from uh, condensed matter physics, which is called the Fröhlich model, or to be more precise, uh, these terms here are added, so it's, it's sort of an extended Fröhlich model. And that's a standard way uh, people uh, describe uh, the uh, uh, interaction of an impurity in a, in a, a Bose gas, so the bose polaron problem. Uh, the problem with that is, however, the following. And that you can see here, this is a, a picture taken from a uh, 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 publication of uh, Grust and collaborators uh, uh, in uh, 2017. Uh, which actually looked uh, with a non-perturbative uh, uh, RG method uh, calculating the polaron energy uh, for a relatively small gamma parameter. So we are well in this weakly interacting regime uh, of 0 0.44 uh, as a function of the uh, uh, impurity boson interaction strength. And uh, what you can see here is this is just the, the, the uh, uh, poor man's mean field result. And this is the, uh, the uh, RG result, which is an, essentially an infinite order uh, perturbation uh, 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 approach. And you see 
it, it fails sort of less miserably uh, in, in the strong interaction regime. It deviates quite substantially from their Monte Carlo results, which we assume to be uh, the, the, the correct uh, uh, results here. And actually, that's an easy way to understand why this happens. Uh, uh, if you look at the Fröhlich model, then what the impurity is actually doing, it is locally creating photons. And it's not only creating the photons, it's binding the photons to itself. That's what the definition of a polaron is. A polaron is actually the uh, quasi-particle uh, attracting the photons uh, 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 to itself, and thus changing its properties, changing the energy, and changing the mass. So what this means is that locally now you have a high density of photons, the phonons, and therefore, even if the phonon-phonon interaction is weak, this is overcompensated by the fact that you create very many local phonons. And therefore, uh, in order to, to correct this, you would have to take into account all higher order phonon-phonon interactions, even though if the, uh, from the onset they are, they are weak. Now, uh, one could do this, but that is, of course, a very complicated uh, way of approaching it. Turns out that there's a much, much simpler and uh, maybe much more clever way uh, and that is uh, taking into account the back action of the impurity to the condensate uh, uh, bef uh, and, uh, 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 beforehand, and then uh, considering phonons on this deformed background. And the, the advantage of that is that on this deformed background, it turns out that the number of new phonons, which are created in that model, is actually small. It's not zero, but it's small. So therefore, this uh, higher order uh, uh, processes of phonon-phonon interactions can indeed be ignored. And okay, so that is uh, the, the, the basic approach which I'm going to, uh, 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 to follow. And it turns out that with this, we can describe uh, equilibrium properties. We can look at uh, dynamical properties and even uh, uh, systems where we have a coupling to an, uh, to an open system. Okay, so the first thing is I just want to convince you uh, looking at, a, uh, at the ground state properties of of a bose polaron that this approach works very well. Then I will uh, look at uh, the interaction between two polarons uh, and the question of uh, bound states of polarons, bipolarons. And then I will uh, 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 switch gears and talk about dynamics. So I will ask the question, what is actually happening if I take uh, an, an impurity and uh, inject it into a condensate? So how does it actually form this, uh, this quasi-particle? And, um, and we'll see that, that this is a quite a rich uh, uh, dynamics can, which can go on there. And finally, <coughs> I, I want to discuss uh, the situation where we take the coupling of the impurity to the condensate not as a fixed value, but we modulate it in time very fastly and randomly. So we basically have some sort of noisy uh, impurity. And I uh, want to show you that uh, using these type of uh, noisy uh, contacts or noisy impurities, we can actually very nicely control superfluid flow uh, in this, uh, can create and control superfluid flow in these uh, one-dimensional condensates. Okay, uh, now uh, the first thing is about the single Bose polaron. If you're interested, uh, you can just look up the, uh, the, this papers uh, of all the details. Okay, so um, we have a single impurity. Now what we are doing is uh, we are going first into a co-moving frame, co-moving with, uh, uh, with the impurity by a so-called lilo pines transformation. And then uh, we are just first looking at the mean field uh, 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 problem. And then the mean field equation uh, is nothing else than a, a nonlinear Schrödinger equation with some uh, uh, term taking care of the finite velocity of the, of the gas. And uh, most importantly, uh, however, we take the uh, interaction with the impurity already into account on the level of the condensate. And the nice thing about this equation is you can actually solve it analytically. Uh, it's in 1D. And uh, uh, just to, to uh, 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 give you an idea how you do it, basically what you're doing is you'll cut some gray solitones and, and uh, stick them together at the position of the impurity. And then you find these uh, a type of uh, solutions which look like, uh, like this. Uh, and, uh, uh, and in fact, you find not only one, you find two. Uh, so there's this, this uh, blue the solution, which is the ground state, and then there's one excited state, which has this uh, uh, red uh, density distribution. Uh, uh, this solution, however, exists only uh, if there, the uh, uh, momentum of the impurity is below some uh, critical value. And for very, very weak interaction, this critical value is just the speed of sound, as you probably would have expected with the 
Landau critical velocity. But if you crank up the interaction strength, then this critical velocity actually drops down and goes all the way to zero. Okay, so what are the results? Now, uh, this is plotted here, so for just two uh, quantities. The one thing is the polar own energy, and the other one is the polar own mass, and as a logarithmic uh, scale of this uh, uh, interaction strength between impurity and bosons, and you see different results uh, popping up. This is the same plot which I already showed you before. And if you look here, you see the blue line is uh, the result which you get out of the simple mean field uh, solution. And you see, it already this mean field solution makes a much, much better job in uh, 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 predicting the correct uh, uh, energies uh, uh, as compared to the uh, RG me method uh, uh, when you take the Freudian Hamiltonian. And, uh, and then if you, on top of that, uh, you take into account the, uh, um, the, the fluctuations in a, in a Bogolubov approximation, you see that, that you're always uh, almost completely head on. And uh, despite the fact that uh, what we are looking here is, is the data which correspond to, an, to the one and only experiment uh, which exists uh, on a 1D Bose gas in, in the, uh, uh, from Catania at all, uh, where the mass ratio is sort of a little bit uh, unfavorable. Now, uh, the same thing happens for the, for the polar own mass, and uh, uh, the prediction is also uh, relatively nice. Well, there's one little problem which we realized. We were not so happy with, with the fact that the uh, um, quantum Monte Carlo seemed to suggest the saturation of the, of the mass while our uh, theory did not. And then we, we, uh, yeah, we uh, scratched our heads a little bit where this could be coming from. And then actually we realized that's not the problem of our approach, it's the problem of the Monte Carlo simulation. And uh, the reasons are following. If the polar one becomes very, very strongly interacting in 1D, then in order to move it, it has to actually push all the atoms of the condensate. So the mass of the polar one is actually uh, uh, becoming the mass of the whole cloud. And the, uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, Quantum Monte Carlo simulations were always done with finite number of particles. So we asked uh, Gregor Asakashik to, to do these uh, simulations again for different numbers of particles. And we also adjusted our theory to take into account this finiteness of the system. And then uh, the results were, were perfectly uh, head on. So uh, the bottom line of that is that, that all of these properties of, the, uh, uh, of, of uh, polarons can, can very nicely be uh, described already on the level of a mean field theory, provided you make the right mean field theory. So you, you uh, expand the, the, the system uh, around the, 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 the proper solution. Okay, so uh, let's then uh, go to a bit more uh, uh, interesting problems. Let's uh, have a look what happens if you have two of these uh, impurities and you look at the interaction between, uh, between the two. Well, why is that interesting? Well, for example, consider the two are fermions and consider this is some sort of uh, uh, environment uh, where you want to make the fermion-fermion interaction stronger, for example, in the context of, of high TC superconductivity that, that uh, some long time ago, it was uh, uh, one of the uh, ideas people had to explain what's going on there. And if you are, again, if you're interested, you can look it up in, uh, in this paper. Okay, so if you have uh, two impurities, then uh, making the, this little Pines transformation, you can again move into a co-moving frame with the center of mass of, of the two impurities. So you get rid of this one quantum degree of freedom. Uh, unfortunately, there's one other degree of freedom left, namely the relative uh, coordinate of the two and the relative motion, which you cannot get rid of. And um, so therefore, uh, we need to make one more uh, approximation and this approximation is a Born-Oppenheimer approximation, which uh, should be good if the mass of the impurities is much larger than the mass of the bosons. Actually, it turns out at the end that this condition here uh, is not really that strong and uh, strongly needed. And the reason is that the, the two uh, impurities form a polaron, and this polaron itself gets an effective mass which is uh, uh, much larger than the mass of the, uh, of the bare particle. And therefore, this Born-Oppenheimer approximation is actually valid uh, uh, in, in, in regions where you wouldn't even expect it. Uh, okay, so, uh, uh, but if you do uh, take this approximation and then we uh, uh, look uh, for the, again, for the solution of the equation, turns out that you can still solve it analytically. 
with some uh, elliptic functions, etc. So the expressions look ugly, but it doesn't matter. You can solve it. And, um, uh, and, uh, and, and what you find is uh, that then you get these uh, 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 two dips. Uh, and um, if you fix the, uh, the, the separation between the two particles and you crank up the intensity, what's going to happen is that, that uh, the condensate is pushed out in the space between the two, uh, uh, between the two part particles. And as a consequence of this, uh, uh, we find that the interaction potential has, uh, uh, co uh, uh, is uh, uh, completely different from the exponential or Yukawa type uh, interaction you, you would expect in the, uh, in the uh, linear response regime. And in fact, it becomes linear. And you again see it, it uh, perfectly, almost perfectly agrees with uh, the quantum, uh, quantum Monte Carlo uh, simulations. Uh, uh, for weak and, and also for strong interaction. This linear interaction uh, 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 it can actually be explained uh, uh, quite simply. Um, uh, this here, what is plotted here in this, uh, in this uh, density plot is the density of a false color uh, coding, the density of the condensate as a function of the separation of the two impurities uh, and uh, for a, a strong interaction. So what you can see is that uh, un until a certain separation length, which is on the order of a few healing lengths, all condensate is pushed out. So as a consequence, uh, you have always a constant pressure of the, uh, of the condensate uh, uh, outside, which produces a, a constant force, uh, irrespective of the separation of the two. And this gives rise to this linear, uh, linear potential. Uh, actually, there's also a very small uh, uh, contribution on Casimir type of, eff uh, of effect, which you only see if you take into account uh, the uh, quantum uh, fluctuation, but this is really many, many orders of magnitude smaller. Now, uh, then uh, one could, of course, ask, well, how good is Born-Oppenheimer, or can you make uh, uh, improvements over Born-Oppenheimer? Turns out that uh, the very simplest uh, uh, improvement of Born-Oppenheimer gives rise to an additional potential, which is related to the uh, uh, spatial derivative of the wave function. And, uh, and uh, uh, what, it, what it amounts to, you can see here in, this, uh, in, in these plots, for uh, infinite mass, uh, this is uh, the potential we get out of the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. And then if we uh, decrease the mass, you see there's a slight shift, but the shift is surprisingly small. Uh, but there's one other uh, interesting feature, namely the, we get a local maximum of the uh, interaction potential. And uh, it turns out that uh, quantum Monte Carlo simulations to calculate the potential is a very tricky uh, thing to do, and you can all only do it uh, sort of approximately, and you see that there are a lot of errors if the interaction is weak. Uh, but at least the positions which we predict from the simple theory seem to be um, uh, reproduced by, by quantum Monte Carlo. Okay, so if you have this linear uh, attractive potential, then uh, of course you can have bound states, and, um, and, the, uh, uh, and this is uh, the, the energy of the bound states, as a function of the uh, interaction strength um, for, uh, yeah, for different mass ratios. So here the mass ratio is one uh, and, and three, uh, so it's not really very much larger than, than, uh, uh, than the mass of the bosons. And uh, we plotted here the lowest two are the energies of the ground state, and the, uh, uh, the next two are the energies of the first excited state, which would correspond to fermions. So if you have two fermions, then they're because of uh, anti-symmetry of the wave function, uh, they, uh, we can only uh, occupy the first excited state. And uh, the dashed lines are the results in the Born-Oppenheimer limit, and the straight lines are the result on the, uh, for the, uh, uh, for, uh, taking into account this Born-Oppenheimer correction. And here again, you can see uh, that that uh, reproduces perfectly the uh, uh, quantum Monte Carlo result, even in the attractive case, uh, where uh, the interaction uh, 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 on this scale, basically skyrockets and runs out of the uh, uh, out of the curve, so it's multiplied by ten to the minus two. Okay, good. And uh, uh, but now let me uh, uh, switch the subject and look a little bit at the dynamics of uh, uh, of, the, of uh, uh, an impurity which you send in into a condensate. Now the very naive uh, picture is that if I have an impurity and I send it into a condensate with a velocity which is less than, a vacu than the uh, speed of sound, so less than the uh, Landau-critic velocity, nothing happens. Uh, but 
that is a wrong, that is actually wrong. And the reason why it's wrong uh, is because this impurity will eventually form a, a polaron, and the polaron has a different mass than the free, the free particle. So what you will always see is a deceleration of the, uh, of the uh, impurity, even if you do it adiabatically. Okay, and even if you start uh, with an initial velocity which is less than the uh, uh, critical velocity, uh, this effect still happens. So what you can see here is for different linear ramp times, so we, we switch on the interaction uh, a, a linear in time until some time capital TC, which is indicated here by the dashed lines. And as you can see, if, I, if, if we make this time longer and longer and longer, then eventually uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, velocity of the, of the impurity uh, uh, attains this value, which is given by the initial momentum divided by the effective mass of the polaron divided by the uh, speed, of, uh, uh, speed of sound. So uh, you should always keep in mind that, that uh, uh, being below the critical velocity doesn't matter. It uh, doesn't mean that the, uh, uh, the impurity is not decelerating. But now let's have a look what actually happens if we do a quench. So what you can uh, see here now is uh, the density and the momentum, uh, uh, momentum as a function of time uh, for uh, a not too heavy impurity uh, in the quench of the interaction strength. Uh, and here we start at a velocity which is below the Landau critical velocity, and here we start with a velocity above Landau critical velocity. And then uh, uh, what's going to happen is that, um, and, and the, this uh, blue and red line here correspond to the two uh, bound states of the nonlinear uh, Schrödinger equation, or the, the two uh, eigenstates of the nonlinear Schrödinger equation. So what you can see is uh, that essentially uh, what happens in this regime is that the, 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 the particles uh, uh, generate some shock waves of uh, a density, uh, um, uh, density waves which propagate out. And as a consequence, the, the particle gets decelerated. And uh, if it starts above the critical value, it ends up in a finite uh, momentum, which is below this critical velocity which corresponds to the existence of the bound state. So it's not the Landau critical velocity, but below this uh, uh, other critical velocity. Now, uh, the story changes if I go to a very heavy impurity. Now, uh, here, what, what can happen here are two different things. The first thing is that as soon as the momentum of this impurity crosses uh, this, uh, 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 this line here and the two uh, bound states, uh, these two uh, uh, eigen solutions uh, uh, appear, it can actually happen that the solution sticks not with a true ground state, but with an excited state. And, uh, and uh, one has to keep this in mind that, that uh, the, uh, the, uh, for, and this one is, is meta stable, so this can, can live for very long times. Or uh, what, you, uh, what you probably have seen in the, in the lower graph is that at some point, uh, the, uh, um, the uh, impurity starts shoot, shooting solitones. So it creates a strain of solitones which takes away the, uh, the momentum. And, uh, and uh, the funny thing is that if you look for the final velocity as a function of the initial velocity, and for, in this case for, the, for a heavy impurity, uh, then uh, you, you see there is some non-monotonic behavior. Uh, uh, first of all, it increases from... Uh, um, uh, from uh, value zero to a maximum value which is given by this critical velocity and then it decreases. And in the region where it decreases, uh, it turns out that the final state is actually the excited uh, state of the, of the polaron. And notice, it can even change the sign. So what's gonna happen is that, that, the, that the impurity bounces back from the, from, from the condensate uh, and then it, uh, it oscillates going uh, uh, in, in, these different, uh, in these different regimes. Okay, so uh, my final subjects for the last three minutes, four minutes, maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, I uh, want to talk about uh, some uh, uh, project which we actually started together with, with our chairman. Um, and, and that is the question, what happens if I take an impurity, but I now uh, uh, modulate the interaction strength and I modulate it in a, uh, with some noise? Well, what is the expectation? Well, the expectation is that, that if you have a noise source and a condensate, what this noise source is doing, it is producing uh, excited atoms, which are not in a condensate state, but in some excited state. 
So you would uh, expect that there is a flow of incoherent particles uh, uh, flowing outwards. Because the whole system is number conserving, so uh, the they, they have to be particles, but they will just be in a, in a, in a, in a uh, way of an incoherent or uh, um, uh, uh, um, entropy flow going away from the, from the center. Now, since the total, uh, um, the total particle number has to be conserved, there has to be something which compensates this current. And, and, and in fact, uh, what turns out uh, is going uh, to happen there is that there is a compensating superfluid flow which you create by the, uh, by the uh, impurity uh, running inward. And, um, uh, and uh, uh, to describe this, uh, uh, we uh, look again on the, in the mean field level uh, now uh, on the, uh, on the uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation with finite velocity. But now we have here uh, the strength of the, of the coupling to the uh, impurity uh, with some, doesn't have to be a point-like potential, uh, uh, which is a random variable, so the, it averages to zero, but has a, um, a, a Markovian uh, white noise uh, uh, fluctuations. Turns out that this equation has to be considered as a Stratonovich uh, stochastic differential equation. And uh, so that means that if I combine the, this eta of t and, uh, and, uh, and, and, this, and this phi and, and dt, and then I get a stochastic increment, which is uh, correlated with the field. So if I take this average, it, uh, it is not going to be a, a zero. That's the, uh, the interpretation of, a, of the Stratonovich equation. And uh, now, as a consequence of that, if you take this equation where the, where the field now is a stochastic variable, and you first look at the average field, and this average field describes essentially the superfluid amplitude of the, of, of the flow, then uh, you find that uh, uh, out, of this, uh, um, out of this Stratonovich term here, uh, you uh, get a term uh, uh, where the interaction potential is squared and it becomes imaginary. So this now uh, is a loss term. So that means that, that the, uh, for the coherent uh, uh, amplitude or superfluid amplitude, uh, you have now a problem where you have a local, uh, local loss term. And, um, and uh, then uh, if you uh, change the strength of this local loss, you, you find two scenarios. Um, so what is shown here is the density around the impurity at different moments of time for the first one here is for weak interaction and the other one is for, uh, uh, sorry, for, for weak uh, uh, um, uh, uh, local noise and the other one is for strong local noise. So for weak local noise, uh, what's going to happen is that you burn a little bit of a, of a hole here and this hole just uh, spreads out and the, the density remains flat and there is a constant superfluid flow constant in this region where the density is constant uh, inward. Um, and, uh, as a, uh, and in fact, in that regime, you find that the induced coherent current as a function of, this, of the strength of, the, uh, uh, of, of this noise here is uh, monotonous in the first part actually linear. Uh, so this is a linear response regime. But then something else happens. If you crank up the density even more, then uh, uh, it dip forms uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this plateau here. And uh, the, the depth of this dip actually becomes deeper and deeper the stronger this, uh, the, the noise gets. And as a consequence of that, the current actually reduces. And the reason why the current is, uh, reduces, uh, you can understand uh, physically as well, because the particles have to actually uh, move past this point here. And, uh, and, and uh, since the density is very low at, 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 this, uh, uh, at, at this point, it becomes harder and harder for the, uh, for the particles actually to flow. And also, the, the mechanism which kicks out coherent uh, atoms from the condensate in the non-condensate states uh, gets less uh, efficient because the density gets down. So this here is a, is a Zeno regime where uh, the, despite the fact that you increase the, this uh, dissipative uh, rate, uh, the, the current goes, goes down and uh, uh, becomes smaller. Okay, so I'll be finished in a minute. Um, now, um, what is uh, even more interesting is if you now actually also add a finite velocity of the, uh, uh, of the underlying coherent, uh, of the underlying condensate. So what is plotted here is the dissipation strength uh, versus the external uh, current or the, the velocity of the, of the condensate. 
and in a, a false collar is the induced current. So for very for vanishing velocity, we see the two regimes. We see the linear response regime and then the Zeno regime. Uh, but if you have a finite velocity, there's also a third regime, which you can uh, uh, see here, uh, where the system starts to shoot solitons, so the system becomes dynamically uh, unstable. And uh, now, uh, uh, if you uh, uh, take two impurities rather than one impurity, then the first impurity, so to say, creates a coherent flow of atoms uh, moving toward it. And then uh, at the second impurity, this is now an impurity which sits in a finite flow uh, of atoms. And as a consequence, uh, we see that the current induced, say, here on the right side, uh, de depending on the, on the dissipation strength of this side here, this dissipation on the left side basically is, uh, corresponds to the, uh, uh, to, to, to the strength of the, of the flow of particles. Then you see in this uh, diagram, uh, left dissipation, right dissipation strength, three regimes, linear response, Zeno, and this, uh, uh, non-monotonous uh, um, uh, non uh, part where you have instabilities. But in this uh, part here, uh, uh, up front here, uh, you, you find that there is a universal relation between the superfluid flow or the superfluid current and the difference of the two uh, uh, dissipation strength. So basically what you can do, you can just by changing the, 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 the strengths of the dissipation at these two sides, you can continuously control the flow, superfluid flow of particle between the two sides. Okay, so uh, with this, I sh uh, should uh, stop and just uh, flash up the summary and thank you for your attention.